Yokeship YouTube channel. What's up guys, Dan the Fitness Man here. So today, producer Tim said I have to do more real behind the scenes vlog style stuff for you guys. So you get to know kind of what it's like day in the life at Yokeship. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna let Jake follow me around. This is a normal work day for me. Just kind of, number one, being a husband and a father. Number two, running the Yokeship business. Number three, always be tinkering with that elk filter of running all my decisions through how can I get ready for elk season 2022. Come along. That's the last of it. First things first, I usually have a cup of coffee, do emails, and then finally when Jake gets there, I come upstairs and make breakfast. Breakfast for me is a smoothie and vitamins. By the way, a lot of people ask, these are from Crispy. These are the crossovers. These are my daily drivers. Hey, you've reached Drew with Howard Pin Electric. Or press one for more options. Drew, the trigger slapper Howerton. Uh, today is the 13th, Wednesday, I cannot train at 4 p.m. Tristan's got soccer practice. Can you go at 2.30, hit me a text, and we'll get a quick one in. Holla at your boy. Hey, babe. Hey, what's going on? Cleaning like a mofo. All right, getting it all ready? Trying to, yeah. Did you guys put that mountain lion up? Yeah. How hard was that? Or it was really hard. I've never mounted anything before, so I, I didn't know what to expect. Um, Rod made a really cool board for it to mount on. Um, it's just, unfortunately, we... It just was harder than anticipated, that's all. All right. Well, drive Please. safe. I love you, and um, I love you I'll too. see you when you get home. Okay, sounds good, then. All right, bye. Bye. So Alicia um, is quite the little entrepreneur and she had this great idea that, hey, we should uh, Airbnb VRBO our cabin in Idaho when we don't, because we don't use it very often. And I was like, whoa, 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 when do you want to do this? So you can't rent it out during spring bear. Spring bear's a long season. Um, so we compromised. Um, I don't hunt North Idaho for elk anymore. So I think she's gonna, if you guys want to rent my cabin out, you can hunt out of it. I think there's a few elk left up there uh, for archery or rifle. She's gonna she's gonna rent it out a couple times this summer and just try to offset some of the expenses. Just even we own the cabin outright, but man, like property tax, utilities, water, uh, maintenance, all that kind of stuff. So she's gonna start doing that. She's up there with my dad, and they got the mountain line hung up. Um, I killed a mountain line a couple years ago. Got a full body mount and. Uh, I can't wait to see how it turned out as far as getting it up on the wall and what they did there. So that is cool. Right now we're headed to uh, a store on the north side of Spokane. I bought a handgun before I went to Texas. And in my lovely state, it's like a five or 10 day waiting period. They got to do a background check and make sure your mental health is all clear, which is fine or whatever. So, but I want to get a Glock 20. <laughs> Crossfire. Gen 4. I guess the Gen 5 has tapered on the end here, but comes with three mags. You know, they're going to outlaw those in Washington starting July 1st. You can't, I mean, you can have them, but you can't sell them. So. Pretty freaking stoked. I'm not a gun guy per se, but I I do have a Glock 23 and I usually have that on me when I'm uh you know in bear country, wolf country, and by bear I mean black bear. So it's nice to have upgrade to a 10 mm for bear spray in G Bear Country. I know two guys now that have had run-ins with bears. One guy had to kill it, and the other guy Bob Lagasso, he got beat up pretty bad by the bear. Both grizzlies. So, one in Wyoming, one in Montana. 
and I'm trying to hunt both those states this year for elk. So I just think it's a good idea to run bear spray and gun spray. I think it's a great combination. But items that we forget to talk about, like, hey, this, this piece is super important, but I never even bring it up. Um, so something like that. Maybe you can start thinking of items that maybe you haven't done videos on or that you haven't talked to or done any social pieces on, but you're like, hey, you know what? This, this is an important piece. Like, we should just mention it. Obviously, it needs to be sold on the store. This is the fun part. So... Tyler Trivet. Austin Caldwell, Aaron Stuffelnagel, Bradley Seiler, Christopher Mortensen, and a bunch more. You guys bought stuff from elkshape.com, and I'm sending you a bunch of surprise stuff, broadheads included, and I got more stuff to take to Spokane Valley Archery because they do a lot of my fulfillment, and they're gonna add a bunch of cool stuff into your guys' uh, orders. We love giving back to our subscribers. Right now, we're at USPS, we're gonna drop these off. They've already been, um, labels have already been printed. We just gotta drop them off. Drop these off in my mailbox. I don't want that big of a mailbox. Okay. You want your receipt for any of these? Well, I just wanna make sure, is it cool to ship from here? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, you yeah. You just wanna drop off here, yeah. I just wanna drop them off. Okay, yeah, if you don't need your receipts. No. And you can even, if you don't need your receipts, you can even skip the line and just drop off at any empty counter. Are you sure? Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. Have a nice day. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks. Up and down. Oh, you got it right there. It's me. So I mm. got a <laughs> lot. I think yesterday because I uh, I'm working with light light force. Yep. And I was like switches. I need to figure out switches. And I was like, yeah, man. oh, we need to do the winch thing. And I'm like trying to line out content. And I was like gonna check in with you guys, see what your schedule's like. Yeah, we're pretty open. Um, I'll have a better idea when I get back to the office. But um, I, there's two things that I would love to see get put on your truck would be uh, a twin air, ARB twin air compressor. Okay. Um, yep. So you can air your wheels down when you hit the trail and then you can air back up when you get to pavement. And then, um, but then you'll also have you know, an air compressor for anything that you would need if you're out camping or you're out on the trail or anything. The yeah, last thing we gotta do today is get some spy point trail cameras out. We're gonna, they're cellular, so they're gonna tell me right away what's going on. The turkeys usually kind of start the season off by roosting and strutting in the mornings right over here. Um, they'll also do it in the evenings, but I'll show you. And now I've gone to the landowner and asked them, and they said absolutely no hunting whatsoever. Um, it sounds like it's just for family, but this little field right here, they call it Fraser's Hill. This will be a strut zone. There'll be like 10 gobblers all strutting just in the mornings. And then they slowly kind of disperse like turkeys do. It, uh, they cross the road and they start working their way up through this timber right here. Well, at the top of the hill, is my buddy's place, it's 10 acres, and there's houses all around, so you can use a shotgun, but we'll probably use a bow, and um, we're gonna go put out a couple trail cameras and set up a ground blind. We might even see some turkeys or hear them gobbling. Uh, I've literally called him into his front yard before, but couldn't get a shot because I would hit his house with my shotgun last year, so I couldn't take a shot. Uh, and then I brought my two little kids with me last year and we parked the truck, got out and went over the hill and shot a tom at about 15 yards right in front of both of my kids. I loved that. So we'll see what's up. Maybe the landowner will be home. I probably should have called him and said I'm coming, but he's pretty cool and we'll show you guys. And this nice thing about this is five minutes from my house. So mornings aren't really like that important because they're all down there strutting. But boy, once the hens go spread out and eat and sit on their nest or whatever man does it get good these toms and gobblers yeah they shot my bird right there last year
Got the ground blind set up here. We kind of have this little strut zone. We'll put a decoy out. We do got a spy point. We got a micro link right there with the solar. Um, that's going to be spitting out. And I, I have it on a transmission every time it takes a photo because I live five minutes away. That will drain your battery really fast if you're if you put that in the backcountry. So a lot of times in the backcountry, I'll have it just uh, transmit photos like once or twice a day tops uh, just to save battery. But that one's gonna be sending me images real time to the app that Spy Point has. It's awesome. I got one more camera. I'm gonna go down here. There's another little like pinch where they like, seem to go back and forth. I'd like to know what time they're doing that. Okay, okay we are set up for turkeys. A lot of times they go from this wood lot to that wood lot, from this wood lot up to the field. We know where they roost. They roost on sanctuary property where landowners do not give permission. However, when they're done strutting and doing their thing for the first hour or whatever, then, then it gets good, especially middle of the day when the hens disperse. There's several Jakes and Toms that become very callable. It's a high wind day today, we didn't bump any turkeys, but we certainly can call some in. Um, I think using a ground blind with a bow is kind of kind of cheating a little bit, but at the same time, it also allows you to draw your bow and make a really good shot. Turkeys have teeny tiny vital zones. I'm gonna use a big expandable. I might use a Rage. I might use the new Thorns, over two inch cutting diameter. And uh, just, it's super fun. But remember, bears are greater than turkey. So if we get any gap in our schedule, we're driving to Idaho to go spring bear hunting. But any like weekday work, sneak over here for a few minutes, do a little turkey hunting, take the kids. It's awesome, man. Spring is the best. First two shots at 20. Look at this. Come on, man. We got some casualties. So now we get to repair. I know a guy who's got more veins. All right, so that was at 20. If I was being picky, I'd say it's just a teeny tiny high right, but let's uh, walk back to 40. And then we'll go walk back to 60 and we'll just kind of see how this sight tape looks. Wow, that looks so sick. <laughs> you really get to see the rock. I didn't really, the rock never really stood out to me, but that. Oh, it did to me. I knew it was going to be like a That is a big. giant mountain lion. Yeah. Okay, so that was hot. Okay, so finally a low one. pretty much an 11. This is the last shot I just took, which was 57. These are all 60. So it looks like 57 is my 60. And because we're recording this, I don't have to write it down. I can watch this video. So this is 80 yards and you shot it for what? 75. Okay. I just went from 60 to 75 pounds. Of course my sight tape's gonna be off. If you're doing sight tapes, I recommend you just take your time, give it a full week or two. You know, I wasn't gonna shoot today, but somehow the wind just stopped, and I was like, oh my gosh, we gotta shoot. And uh, the reason why I would put 75 pound mods on this is just quite honestly, this bow has the sweetest string angle ever. And I think that's just gonna allow me to shoot better. And running 411, still gonna be pretty good for tack, but I can also cross over and hunt with it. Might not shoot an elk with a 411, but then again, I might, but uh, I definitely shoot an antelope. I'd shoot uh, mule deer and whatever tags we can get for 2022. We're gonna shoot it for 90. And if Jake's math is right, which I have no doubt, because he got a GED. <laughs> Ninety-three, it is. Rolling. 
Yep. Okay, so at um, 100 yards, I tried it for 90, and I smoked the leg, and then I moved it to 93, and I love the elevation. Slightly to the left, not a big deal. 93 is 100, so we'll go find a sight tape that matches that right now. String angle wise, string angle, the 33 is just hard to beat. Super, it's gonna be between these two. Yeah, 294 is the ticket. So I do that just to see what I gotta trim. We gotta trim it like this. That's pretty dang close. So 20, about 38. And then we got 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then we have room. Let's see if this should come down to 100 at the bottom. Right at 100. And so that top pin is 100. That bottom pin is probably 110. I could leave that at 30 and 45 and have a lot of range covered. If an animal's at 20, aim a little low. If an animal's at 30, aim dead on. If an animal is at 40, you can kind of almost split the pins. If an animal walks out to 45, hell, if an animal walks out to 50, you can aim a little high, and then anything past 50, you can slide out. You gotta find your sweet spot for me. I know me, and I'll probably run with the standard 20, 38, and then have to slide if it's past 40. Now that we've switched out the mods, checked the timing, grouped some arrows, selected our preliminary sight tape, you know it wouldn't be behind the scenes without a little uh, elk shape workout in the elk shape gym. enjoyed a, a day in the life behind the scenes of elk shape um, it is uh, I'm not really a youtuber I'm not really an influencer I'm an elk hunter I'm a, a husband I'm a dad and uh, I love making content for you guys so if you dig it subscribe tap the bell to be notified remember separation is in the preparation catch you on the next one